This guy started with the end in mind, and the end is to remove the four commissioners so that we have a new IEBC that will preside over the boundaries delimitation and will preside over the next election and will preside over a referendum if any was called in between. It is clear. And when I hear my colleague who sat in JLAC, who was part of the team that recommended the establishment of the tribunal, I get more convinced that uh, perhaps those commissioners who decided to exit uh, did it because they knew that it was a fait accompli. What I expect is if there will be two commissioners who will not have um, thrown in the towel, they will proceed, the tribunal will proceed from tomorrow. But is it from what, tomorrow, not Friday? To, tomorrow, is, the status conference is tomorrow, on Thursday. Is it Thursday or Friday? I think Friday. It should be Friday. It should be Friday, yes. Well, you see, when, Tomorrow when, we are told there's something else happening, which you might tell us about later on. When a tribunal, <laughs> when a tribunal is uh, established to look into allegations arising out of a petition, that tribunal is expected to confine itself to the grounds and the issues that have been brought up in the petition. We do not expect this tribunal to go on a fishing expedition to start looking into issues that were not considered or that were not brought by the petitioners and that were not contained in the report of the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee. And so the main prayer of the petitioners was for the four commissioners to uh, be kicked out of office. Those two who have already left office, therefore, in our view, have got nothing to answer and they've got no business appearing before the tribunal because the ultimate prayer of the petitioners was for them to vacate office on the basis of allegations that were leveled against them. So we expect that probably the tribunal will proceed with the two, but we expect the tribunal to restrict itself to the grounds in the petition. We don't expect them to use this to play politics. And Waiga, even the composition of the tribunal itself, from the chair, uh, we know the circumstances under which uh, he was denied appointment and he was subsequently appointed. From members of the tribunal, we know some of them are business partners with uh, some people who are in uh, parliament. I don't have to name names here. We'll discuss that in parliament where you have, we've got the privilege. This tribunal was set up with an instruction, and that instruction is get these people out of office by hook or crook. When you hear the Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly, Honorable Gladys Boss, saying resignation cannot extinguish the duty of the tribunal constituted to investigate IBC commissioners, the tribunal must discharge its duty to interrogate their conduct and report on the facts. Kenyans deserve to know why they engaged in grave misconduct during the last election. Brief response to that before that, he comes. That is not necessarily the prayer of the petitioners. So the Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly has no business trying to set the tribunal into a fishing expedition. What the tribunal should deal with are the grounds in the petition and the grounds in the Constitution that constitute gross violation, constitute illegalities, and that can get a commissioner out of office. I know politicians have got a lot of, of uh, opinions. We see them every other Sunday in churches. The churches have been turned into political rallies and fora for making political proclamations. But when it comes to the tribunal, it must be guided by the law. It must be guided by the Constitution. And as far as we are concerned, those who have resigned, really, I've got no business appearing before the tribunal. Honorable